Hi friends, one day I was playing good old games on the clone of the Spectrum with which Andre helped me. Suddenly I received a message from the post office. They say I must pick up package. I was waiting for this package the most because there are boards for my next very interesting projects, semi-automatic welding and the soldering iron, which I would probably call an iron mask. Why? The devil knows. Here is this package with boards. The soldering iron is actually outdated and I developed a new version with maintaining the specified power and with other cool features, but we will speak about it more at the end. A few words about the project. This is a battery, that is, an autonomous impulse soldering iron of instant heating. I already made one, but gave it to my viewer in gratitude for the Mega Ohmmeter of the Third Reich. A video about the Mega Ohmmeter has already been released on the channel. I developed a new soldering iron a long time ago, right after the publication of the first video, because judging by your comments, I realized that many people liked it. The idea was that the new soldering iron would be more compact and most importantly completely finished, while not continuing the housing. Everything is assembled on one board, a pulse converter, a protection and battery charging system, moreover all used components are SMD. The soldering iron, as you understand, is completely pulsed. The push-pull voltage converter is powered by a low voltage of 3.7 to 4 volts. On the secondary winding of the transformer, which is closed by the tip, we get a low voltage and a huge current, which leads to a rapid heating of the tip. That is, the principle of operation is the same as that of the old moment soldering irons, but my version is autonomous and powered by a battery. It is also more functional, compact and lightweight. Looking at the soldering iron, you will probably have doubts. This is a whole TV set. Why so many components? Well, let's understand what is what. So, you have a complete circuit in front of you and you have a question. Why did I use just such an element base? After all, you can simplify the circuit and in some places make it even better. I will answer. Since you're watching this video, it means you're fond of electronics and therefore you will find a box with all sorts of Chinese modules like TP4056 charging boards, MT3608 converters, inverter control boards of all kinds and other useful and budget modules. So, take it all, put it together and get such a soldering iron. The main idea is to use widespread components that everyone has, that is, you don't need to buy something scarce and expensive. On the diagram you can see four main nodes, a battery charging system, a battery protection system, a secondary power node in the form of a low power converter and a power converter. The first node is responsible for charging the battery with a stable current and voltage and also has an indication of the charging process. The system is based on the well-known TP4056 chips. I connected three such microcircuits in parallel, thereby making the maximum charge current around 3 amps. Why use TP4056 working in linear mode? It's simple. They are cheaper and more affordable. In principle, why do we need a high efficiency for a charging system? This doesn't affect the autonomy of the device, only affects to the heating of the microcircuits themselves during the charging process. Although in the updated version of the soldering iron, I will already use a pulse charge system. The charging method of this system is CV slash CC, which is better for lithium. Most importantly, this is soldering iron can be charged from any source of 5 volts. It is desirable that it provide a current of 3 or more amperes. Next is the battery protection unit. This part will stop the battery using in case of short circuits, deep discharge and overcharging. To use lithium batteries without such systems are highly not recommended. Here I used a whole bunch of 8205 MOSFETs in parallel to increase the protection current. It was possible to do same with just a couple of more powerful MOSFETs, but I had a lot of boards with these transistors on hand. And yes, the Chinese also release protection boards of this kind, with a bunch of such MOSFETs instead of a couple of more powerful ones, so I'm not the first. The board works according to the classical circuit with the DW01 controller. I already explained how it in the specified video. 
Auxiliary Converter We have a 3.7 volt power source in the form of lithium-ion batteries connected in parallel. This voltage isn't enough to operate the control system and to fully unlock the field effect transistors of the power inverter. This converter provides an output voltage of 12 to 14 volts and solves this problem. And the power voltage is already supplied from the batteries. Why do this if you can use 10.8 volts instead of 3.7 volts by connecting three lithium batteries in series? But in this case, it would be necessary to complicate the charge system as well as add a CAN balancing system. Also, it would be impossible to charge the soldering iron from any power source of 5 volts. Therefore, I chose the least of all troubles. I know about type C power delivery and triggers. New technologies could be applied, but this wouldn't solve all the problems. Next is the power converter. It is made according to a push-pull circuit using PWM controller CG3525 and isn't much different from the converter that I used in the first versions of the soldering iron. To push the power transformer, powerful SMD field effect transistors were used. I took them from the power supply circuits of a non-working video card. These transistors have a very low on resistance of 4 milliohms and decent drain current. There are a couple of them on each arm. You can use any transistor similar in parameters or higher voltage ones. The transformer winding. The parameters of the transformer are indicated on the diagram. Both arms of the primary are 3 turns each with a leads wire of 120 strands of 0.1 mm wire. Lids wire is additionally insulated with Captain heat resistant tape and this must be done. The secondary winding is an ordinary flexible copper cable with a cross section of 12 to 16 squares. The factory insulation is removed from the cable in advance and then the wire is insulated with the same Captain tape. Number of turns of the secondary winding is 1 or 2. A copper bus with a cross section of 20 squares in double fiberglass insulation worked well as a secondary winding. But it was possible to wind only one turn with such a bus and the maximum power of the soldering iron was about 20 to 25 watts. So in the end I wound two turns of the secondary by copper cable. Printed circuit board. It's beautiful in my opinion. Heat intensive polygons metallized through holes. Many power tracks are duplicated on both sides to increase the heat sink area because printed polygons are the only heat sink here. The boards are ordered as always from GLCPCB. This is a Chinese company that has a huge production capacity and can manufacture printed circuit boards for you of literally any complexity and size. It can be either simple single sided and double sided boards or complex multi-layer ones. The prices are affordable and the quality is at a high level. You will find a link to the company's website in the description. There will also be Gerber files of these printed circuit boards for ordering from the factory. Drawbacks. I tried to make the board in such a way that the whole system was a single thermal circuit, but this was not enough. I didn't take into account the key feature of such soldering irons. And this feature is that the heat from the tip through the secondary winding will be transferred to the transformer and the rest of the circuit. At a power above 25 watts, the power components on the board heat up a lot, so I glued an aluminum radiator on the back side through the thermal rubber bands. Another small radiator is glued on top in the same way. This made it possible to painlessly for the circuit got the power of 40 to 50 watts. You can get more, but for my tip, this is enough. 3 to 5 seconds and you can work with a soldering iron. The tip itself is iron, taken from the same factory soldering iron. Only its end was slightly sharpened so that it warmed up more. Three pieces of 18650 cans with an output current of 30 amps and a capacity of 3000 milliamps hour connected in parallel. In this case, the total battery capacity will be about 9 amps hour. This is enough for about an hour of autonomy life of the soldering iron at a power of 60 to 70 percent of the maximum. That is, one hour you can comfortably solder. I didn't weld the cans but soldered them with tinned copper tape. The current consumption from the battery in my case is about 12 to 13 amps. 
This is about 50 watts at the input, unless I didn't measure the efficiency of the converter. But it should be at least 80%, which means that we have 40 watts at the output without problems, and possibly more. I repeat, you can get more power, but my tip will simply melt. I haven't yet decided on the housing, but having a 3D printer at hand, the choice is obvious. I won't risk recommending the design for repetition due to the fact that it is quite complicated. But the thing is very cool, especially for me, a person who constantly runs from the workshop to the warehouse where I store all sorts of boards and dismantle the necessary spare parts from them. For such purposes, the soldering iron will be used. That's all today. Let me remind you that you can find a complete archive of the project with a circuit and a board as well as other useful information in the description of this video. Please rate this video, subscribe to my Instagram where I publish news about projects and much more. Now I say bye, until we meet again. With you as always was Kassian TV.